May is Mental Health Month, and today we're going to focus on the kiddos. How do you achieve some semblance of normalcy during a pandemic? Joining us with how way, on ways on how to keep kids mentally healthy is Dr. Brian Goldstein, Chief Medical Officer for United Healthcare of North and South Carolina. Doctor, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here with us today. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. So, so how do you find that that normalcy? Because kids have been separated and isolated and a lot of them have fallen into depression and anxiety they've been noticing. So what is it that parents can do to get kids feeling like themselves again? Sure. Well, um, this, these are really important questions and I'm glad you all are uh, taking the time to uh, discuss this during, uh, during Mental Health Month. Um, Parents know their children best. Uh, so the first thing I would say is just be mindful of any um, changes in your child's uh, normal behavior. Um, things like uh, changes in their eating habits, uh, their sleep. Um, are they more agitated or more withdrawn than usual? Um, and of course, some of these recommendations are going to vary a little bit based on the age of the child, whether a young child or a teenager. Uh, but for example, are children uh, regressing to things that they had uh, passed through already? For example, uh, wetting the bed for in the case of a young child. Um, are there changes in their school performance or changes in their energy? All of those things could be signs that uh, a child is experiencing more than just sort of, you know, minimal uh, mental health distress. Right, right. And communication. So it's it's not just picking up on these signs, but it's also communicating. How do you open up the lines of communication with your children um, and to start the conversation, to find out what is wrong? Well, this can be challenging, especially uh, because all of us, including parents and relatives and friends, we're all um, dealing with the same stresses uh, as the children as far as um, uh, social isolation is concerned and changes in the routines that we were all used to before the pandemic. So uh, again, the first thing I would say is, um, again, just being mindful and being available, being open to opportunities uh, when you think your child might be uh, willing to discuss their feelings or uh, you know, how they're experiencing their lives at this time. Um, listening is crucial, right? True, true active listening, meaning uh, give the child your full attention. Um, acknowledging is also really important. Acknowledging that these feelings are um, legitimate, um, not unusual, probably common right now. And, and this is actually something that I wanted to ask you because yeah. how do you how do you decipher whether a child is simply in a funk versus something more serious occurring? Uh, it can be very difficult. So again, the first thing I would say is ask. Um, look for opportunities when the child might be open to talking um, certain times of the day, uh, opportunities when it's one on one, uh, even in the car sometimes. Yeah. Children tend to be more open to uh, to speaking. I'm not sure why, but because they don't have to make eye contact with the driver. You know, look for opportunities and then uh, differentiating a funk from something more serious. I think time is the most important factor. Um, if something goes on more than several days, if you hear about it from a teacher, mm -hmm. if you hear about it from a friend, uh, I think those are all signs that this may be more than just um, a passing phase or a mood. And even, even as the parent, though, to initiate the conversation with the teacher, not necessarily wait for the teacher to say something. But finally, doctor, I just wanted to ask you real quick. So Pfizer has approved the vaccine, their vaccine, to be used on kids. Uh, is this something that you would recommend parents consider, seriously consider getting their children vaccinated for COVID? Uh, short answer is yes. Uh, my understanding is that the approval is now for 12 to 15-year-olds. And I think in that age group, I would... Uh, without hesitation, recommend the vaccine because I do think the benefits outweigh uh, any minimal uh, risk of uh, side effects or harms. Okay. Um, we're still waiting on a little more data for younger children, 
Um, but um, I believe that on balance, um, certainly uh, school age children and up, uh, we will likely conclude that um, vaccination is the way to go. Dr. Brian Goldstein, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you again for having me. We're back after this.